early July 1916. Air pressure and wind reports on Swan Island, about 110 miles off the coast of Honduras, gave hint of a tropical weather disturbance in the Western Caribbean. Limited data made it impossible to know details. Given uncertainties, with a likely northward motion, on July 2nd, storm cautions were telegraphed to Weather Bureau offices on the U.S. Gulf Coast. Ship reports were sparse, as mariners had been warned to stay away from that part of the Caribbean. By the 4th of July, a strengthening tropical system was detected in the Gulf on a north-northwest path. Communities from coastal Louisiana to northwest Florida were put under storm warnings. The tropical storm was moving swiftly. Wednesday, July 5, 1916, the storm made landfall as a hurricane on the Mississippi coast near Pascagoula with Category 3 strength. The greatest initial impact was reported in Mobile, Alabama. Winds in Mobile reached a peak of 107 miles per hour. Storm tide was near 12 feet, inundating the entire business district. That was two feet higher than the destructive storm tide from a hurricane 10 years earlier in 1906. A newspaper article relayed, Conditions here are indescribable. The whole waterfront is a mass of wreckage. The wholesale district for blocks along the riverfront is underwater. Practically every large building in the city suffered some damage, many of them being unroofed. Flooding extended four blocks inland from the Mobile River along St. Francis Street past Bienville Square. The wind and storm tide were records for Mobile. Early newspaper reports were of missing vessels and of damage to neighborhoods in Biloxi, Mississippi. Pensacola, Florida had a peak wind of 104 miles per hour with a storm tide of around five feet. While the highest wind was a record for Pensacola, the impact to the Pensacola area was not as devastating as that from the hurricane a decade earlier. As information trickled in, estimates of damage cost and fatalities grew from along the Gulf Coast and well inland. In the four days after landfall, the storm would meander through Mississippi, then central and northern Alabama, leaving floods and crop damage from torrential rain in Mississippi, Alabama, and in western Georgia, before moving into Tennessee. In Alabama, rainfall in Montgomery was over nine inches, and rainfall in Birmingham was over a foot. In total, more than 80 lives were lost across the southeast from the hurricane of July 1916, and damage amounts were well over $4 million, which would convert to far more than $100 million of today's dollars. I'm meteorologist Alan Seals.